Welcome back. It's been a while since we've last played. Um, the layout might look a little bit different here, but that's because we're trying something different. Um, so I just uh, have increased the resolution of the stream um, as well as uh, the bitrate and um, the frames per second. So without too much further ado, let's pick a tournament. What tournament sounds good to you all? Under 1500 Classical. How about that? Oh, okay, we'll play some Super Blitz. Well, actually, there's this Hippo Bullet thing. The Crazy House Hippo Bullet. Oh, man, man, man. Now we're going to start off with some just Blitz. Oh yeah, I could just say like 4K chess, because nobody knows. I mean, well, I guess you could actually go straight to Twitch and ask what is the bitrate, and it would tell you pretty honestly what's going on. All right. Oh, don't scroll. Everything moves if you scroll. <laughs> uh, okay, I can actually drag and drop these 3D pieces. That's pretty cool. Um, it bugs me that the black knight is facing right and the white knight is facing left. Oh man. That's going to haunt me for the rest of this stream. You know that, right? When I'm playing with the 3D set, uh, like over the board tournament games, I always point my knights basically toward the center or toward the enemy king. Um, it's not even a psychological thing, at least not intended as warfare as such. It's more intended, um, I don't know, to help me keep focused toward my target. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be too realistic. Um, okay. That would be a little bit too realistic. All right, so he's planning B5. B5 is definitely in the works. Um, you know what? Screw that. If he's not playing it right away, I'm going to do what I can to stop him. And then I can put my knight on D5. Though I should have done that before kicking this knight. Because now I've made my life difficult. Alright, but I can put my bishop on d5. It's almost as good as putting the knight there. In fact, it's better. I take it all back. I like where my bishop's located. Uh, problem is this b-pawn means that I can't push the a-pawn. So that kind of condemns me to a kingside attack, which isn't going to work. Um, so there's that. Um, see what I can do. Let's bring the queen somewhere useful. Defend this, prepare for a5. This is highly unorthodox. Ooh, my king is in the line of fire. That's not good. That's very not good. Um... <laughs> well, I could do bishop takes b4 and just try to confuse everything. That's not going to work, but I could do it. Um, no, basically I just hosed myself. There's like no coming back from this. It's pretty typical of my games. It's my signature move, just like hanging everything. So my other signature move is I'm okay at end games. Um, so if we can just get into an endgame of some sort, maybe I'll have a chance. It's not looking good at the moment. Oh, I could flip the knights with CSS. That's a good point. If I, like... Hmm. Yeah. I can actually do 3D translation rotation thingamajiggy stuff with CSS. and. Alright, he's going to take on F7. Um, 
On a scale of one to dead, I'm pretty dead. So do I feign aggression or do I... I don't have any choice at this point. All right, he's gonna wait. I don't want to pre-move a capture. That's a little reckless here. I say as I just let my king be hounded. There's actually 3D chess uh, apps already available, just not for Lee chess. Just unfortunate. You think that they want to in integrate with like this very popular platform, but um. Okay. I found a fork, guys. I've been doing my... T oh. This is no good. This is no good. This is... Just kidding. I've been doing all... Oh. Hang on. I've got three seconds left. I've got a pre-move queen takes queen. Nope. Pre-move queen takes queen is bad. Alright. I'm just going to do knight e1 just to be tricky. Yeah, we can concede this. I forgot I don't have a two second increment. Man, I was winning for like one move there at the very end. And then I realized I had no time. Alright, so that's what I get for reading what you guys are saying. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I could flip these knights with CSS. Just point all your stuff straight for yeah that makes sense Inter oh I don't mean to scroll okay we're playing against a 996 guys oh man I should have pre-moved pawn takes bishop just like there probably would have worked he's gonna castle and now oh that's convenient very nice now is he going to sit? Nope. Now is he going to sit? For like 2 minutes and 45 seconds? No. Okay. Cool. Alright, I can win a game, guys. Now we're in 53rd place. We can win this thing, maybe. If I could just stop scrolling... I don't even know why my mouse is scrolling like that. I'm not touching the button. Um, but yeah, I think there was a saying back in the 90s about we need to have a standard for this sort of thing. Um, and it was spoken, I forget. Well, it might not have been the 90s, but it was sometime in the 20th century really famous figure made this quote which could easily be taken out of context and referred to about just about anything in chess but no it had a uh, figure had to was speaking about rather um the way the direction that knights face in diagrams um all right so here we pretend that we're going to trap the bishop and continue pretending, and then he plays a4 instead of a3, because he's only re yep. Yep, I called it. That's what the lower rated players, and even I, on occasion, would do. Let's just push this two squares, because it looks more menacing that way, when really all it does is blunt your bishop. Um, this is slightly different than what I'm considering doing with f5 because I don't think my f pawn is going to stay there very long. Although, uh, do I have anything better than f5 here? I mean, f6 looks fine, but I don't want to expand the scope of this bishop. Um, yeah, bishop d7 looks okay. Just start to harp on this and keep something tied down over here. I know he's intending to threaten something, but what's he intending to threaten? It's not entirely clear, because he can't push e5, he can't push g5. Um... Uh, 
This is why I wanted to push f5 earlier, though, just to avoid all this. Um, he's preparing f6. I just might let him do it. Um, subject to this queen exchange occurring. Okay. That's interesting. Um, so I could push g5 here. g5, en passant, pawn takes, queen takes, rook, rook takes, queen, rook takes. But all my remaining pieces look better, but he's got the f file. Hmm. I don't know that I like that. I don't like that. So we're going to go into this endgame instead. Did I just push f6 here? No. I need to push g5. So I've asserted my ownership of the f file. Um, that's kind of ugly. At least I got the f7 square. Okay. I'm sure something is intended with these pawn moves. Alright, just bring over my rook. Nothing to see here, you're not gonna... Oh, you can't even do rook f8 here. Never mind. Um... I don't like this time situation, however. And consequently, I panic when I have a perfectly good position. This is something I could hold in normal time pressure. I'm sorry, with a increment, I could hold this. As it stands now, I'm just dead lost. You just rook f5, there's nothing I can do to hold this, so we're gonna just sack the house. And so, oh. He's not even taking my pawn. Very well. Pawn takes. Free pawn? Wow, what's he doing? Other than throwing the game. I should play a slower time control. It's the lesson here. King e2, I can play d5. d6, bishop e8. If he moves his king to d1, I chomp on d3. Okay, we went on time. That was bizarre. Like, literally any random move, and or taking on a5 would have been good. Um, okay, we're on a winning streak. I need to manage my time better. That was close. Eh, who knows? Who's on first? What's on second? Oh, here we go. King's Gambit declined. Who doesn't enjoy this opening? Other than the person playing uh, the white pieces. Um, 
So I can chomp this and then castle. If that, then I don't remember the line. Be probably a good thing to remember right about now. Okay. Well, let's play c5. How bad can c5 be? I think we're going to find out. Free pawn! Maybe. Alright, so... Um, here? Maybe? Oh yeah, this is for the most mature of audiences. I mean, look at all this bloodshed. It's horrible. It's terrifying. Um, okay. Plus, if you're watching this King's Gambit and you're not scarred, um, you probably don't know chess very well. Okay, so if he does queen e4, at least I've got bishop f5, and I'm only losing a rook. Um, okay, so apparently we're not going there. That's good. Um, is, this, is that for the death? Yeah, look at all those pawns. Um, just thrown away, just so the other pieces can develop. All right, so that's a fork. It's the knight and the queen. Oh, the queen moved. Damn, I thought he was going to move the knight. Oh, there goes my plan. Um, so what's plan B? Yeah, I don't know. No, I can't hit the queen again, because he'll just take my knight. I am not awake at the moment, am I? All right. Well, let's just let him play h3. See if he goes for it. I mean, what could be more natural than kicking my... Okay. Oh, they actually... I can't move my knight to take that. Thankfully, I still have a tactic. Um, yeah, I'm out of tactics. So we'll just make another one. <laughs> oh, this is so sketchy. At least you can't do knight h4, because then I've got queen h4. Um, okay. We're going here. Um, let's develop the king. Okay, um, free pawn. Oh, there goes my bishop. Nah, I didn't need it. Okay, so this might not be going so well. And I might be down a minute. And my opponent might be rated 2,000. But I'm sure if we keep looking, we'll find a silver lining somewhere. Um, okay, so, hey look, another free pawn. There we go, silver lighting. Okay, just move the rook out of uh, attack. Just going to play knight b5 and attack my rook again. Um... Can I get free pawn? No, he plays c6 here. Except he didn't play it. So this is bad. Um, knight takes a7. Yep, he took. There we go, free pawn. Still down, like, everything. But we got a pawn. Oh, now we're going to trap our knight. I'm grabbing another pawn. There we go. Perfect. Um, okay, let's get the king over here. Wait, I can't move my king into the square that way. 
move it this way. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I have to go this way now. Um, yeah, it's probably fair to concede this, although I've got like eight seconds left, so what's the point? Um, I fork you. I fork you again. I check you. Oh, come on. Yeah! Stalemate. Perfect. I can't believe he fell for that. He has 17 seconds remaining. What's he doing taking my knight? Okay, so that was, yeah, that's the King's Gambit in a nutshell. Um, man, he didn't catch on that I was like sacking my pawns on purpose. Okay, well, I guess that's why I'm rated 2070 and he's rated like 2020 because um, he's got 2020 vision. Or hindsight, or whatever. I ruined the pun. Oh uh, well, I tried, and that's all that matters. So he's gonna do queen b5. Um, and I'm sure there's a tactic here. It's probably just bishop b6. Although I really want to play bishop f2. Screw it, we're playing bishop f2. That's too fun to not play. Um, wait, Owen's defense? Is that b6? So, my knight's hanging, but the bishop on f7 is also hanging. I'm just debating, do I want to... Do I have anything better than... No, I don't. Let's just take it. So he can't play his d pawn because this bishop's not defended by the rook. What might have been worth considering was queen f4, though I didn't think it was any good on account of stuff like bishop d5. So now he's intending d4, um, which is great except for one little detail, and that's that now my queen and my rook are lined up here. So, yeah. So next thing is going to be like queen g2, rook f2. Oh, he spared me from having to go through with any of that. So, yeah, we'll just go for the king directly. Excellent king placement. Um, now, do I have a tr queen trapped here? That almost looks trapped. Nah, I don't know. This is a free rook, though, so we'll take it. Um, and yeah. Something's happening here. Okay. Now if I play my rook up, I'm still... I'm in some danger of a back rank mate happening. Like, if he plays queen c5, intending queen f8, I'll just leave my rook here. Oh no, you didn't. Is he going to go for it? Is he going to... Oh. He saw my trap. Okay, fine. Just push this king up even further. Um, knight f2 would be a mistake. Knight f2 would be sad. Oh, he stopped me from playing c5. Okay, now he's actually got a, le a legitimate checkmate threat, so I have to develop. Bummer. Oh well. Um, yeah, I don't have a mate here.
All right, so we're just gonna move here and then start taking things. Check. Oh, I'm actually forked. Um, should be paying attention to some of these tactics. All right, so you can take my bishop. That's fine. I take your queen. You take my queen. I take your bishop. You take my rook. I take your rook. I'm up a rook. I take your pawn. I trap your king. Oh no, my pawn's attacked. I'd better move it. Oh no, my rook is attacked. Alright, good game. Yeah, maybe I should do 30 FPS next time, because I can hear my computer churning. I'm not sure if you hear that. Um, Alright. Oh, so knight c3? That's not knight c3. Okay. We'll play a queen pawn opening by transposition. Um, let's even open the B file while we're at it, and yeah, and then castle queen side just because we can. Oh, uh, that was a custom user style that I applied. Um, here, let's no queen. There is not so good. Knight e4 is slightly better, stopping knight f6. Uh, okay, so... Haha, <laughs> uh, just changed my mind. We're going to castle this way. Um, so... Oh, you can actually... Wait, not only through the stream, I actually hear it wherever you are. Not sure what that means. All right, let's stop the checkmate. Mate in one threat was pretty thinly veiled there. Okay, we'll move our bishop back. All right, and I guess exchange queens. Oh, but I'm losing a pawn. That's not cool. I don't have any way to improve upon that. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice if I had a tactic here. I could do bishop d2. Just keep the tension for a tempo longer. Um. Yeah, I like that it's so bright and bold. There's nothing subtle about it. Wait. No, I don't have knight f5 trapping a queen. All right, so it's fine. We'll settle for a queen exchange and getting into an end game. Um, my pieces are just as well developed as his are, um, which means he's equalized. Well, honestly, if you're playing a chess um, thing for multiple hours. You do care about this sort of thing. Um, I don't know why people don't. Okay, I'll just go back. And we're up a pawn. You want those extra rating points? You play with a style like this. It makes chess easier when you can see exactly what you're looking for. All right, so if e4, I just fork him. And 
Otherwise, I'd probably still go for the same attack, because it's pretty cool. At a bare minimum, I'm able to trade a knight for a bishop. But after rook e7, I might have something else, too. Um, I might get this other bishop, which looks a lot more useful. I'm not sure why. Well, I think it's the fact that he's got these light squared pawns that complement this bishop, and the bishop's raining down on my weak diagonal here that makes me really want to capture it. Um, so we'll take that. And then, I don't know. Oh, I'm down to like no time. Oh well, that was a good try. That uh, was a good try. Yeah, we lost a bishop. Whatever. I keep forgetting I have no increment. So I keep getting these positions that I could easily win if I had an increment, but I don't. So I'm just dead. So. Uh, again, I don't think I'm scrolling the wheel. I'm not sure what is um, going on with my mouse there. I'll try to fix that, I guess. Um, okay, so we play d4 next. Um, okay. Yeah, you actually, you're going to encounter some sort of eye strain if you play like this uh, for too long. Um, you don't want to use this kind of style all day because a the contrast is just overwhelming. Um, but in terms of good performance, this does help. Oh, free rook. We'll take that. Ah, what is increment? Increment is when your clock increases after every move. Um, so every time you make a move, your clock counts up a couple seconds or however many seconds you say that it's going to count up per move. Um, there is a league which just plays games that start with 45 minutes on the clock, and every time a player makes a move, uh, 45 seconds are added. They call themselves the 45-45 league? Yeah, league. Um, I have to be honest, I haven't played much with the 3D pieces, but I think I like this a lot. Um, for the longest time, there weren't very many quality boards and uh, sets to select from. But somehow this feels just a little bit more at home. Um, Alright, so if he plays d4, then that's that, which he didn't do. Um, let's just develop to d7. Castles, and is he going to play knight f4? I'm threatening this. Oh. I could play bishop g4. I mean, golly, look at all these holes. Uh, if I do bishop g4, he just moves his queen. Um, He's got a lot of activity, but he's leaving some holes behind. Uh, is it possible to lose a game and have a lower cent upon loss? I do not... I've not seen that... In theory, that should not be possible. In practice, who knows? But in theory, the player who um, uh, plays inferior moves should um, come out worse than the average. You don't appreciate how they overlap in 3D, but they, here they really aren't overlapping. Um, the squares are considerably larger than the pieces. With other sets, maybe, but in this particular set, it's okay. Alright, so I'm going to plonk my knight here. If he takes it, I just take back. Oh, that's interesting. 
the way the pre-move looks on the 3D board. You don't see the piece on its destination square. On the 2D board, the pre-move um, pre-places your piece on its destination. Um, the 3D board, it actually looks like the current position. I kind of like that. It's pretty nice. So I'm not sure where I'm going to put all my pieces. He's intending B4. What's this? He's moving really quick. Oh, he's actually rated 2200. That might have something to do with the fact that he might have seen this position before. Okay. Yeah, flux is really nice too. The 3D angle is fixed unless you write some kind of really awesome user style to change that. Um, so I'm just going to put my knight here and try to somehow attack on... Oh, that's bold. That is one bold attack. I'm not sure where he's going with that, because um, I think I have everything covered. Um, bring it. Show me what you got. Okay. Let's pin this to the queen. See how he reacts to this. If he plays h5, I think I just play g5. All right, here we go. All in. Um, yeah, that's definitely an attack. Oh, I forgot. He could just do that. Well, that kind of makes my attack look silly. I don't have anything here. What am I doing? I'm trying to get my rook on b2. That's what I'm doing. Also, I'm in extreme time pressure. So yeah, I was saying if this, then that. Um, I think I'm fine. I'm not seeing what he has here. My position looks scary, but I think I'm okay. Um, I might be mistaken. Yeah, no, my everything is hanging and I have no time. And I don't even have an... Well, I have an attack on g3. That's kind of, sort of, maybe an attack. Um, here, let's continue that kind of, sort of, maybe. Maybe I can just keep hitting g3 until something happens. Um, I take. I take. I take. Okay, I'm screwed. Um... Oh, there's mate. I saw the F8 checkmate. I didn't see this one. Oh, that was close. Maybe. Maybe not. All right, we're in 32nd place, guys. Do you think we can win this? All right, C5. Here we go. Oh, yeah. C5 wins every time. Just need a few more wins like that, and we'll be in first place in no time. Um. Oh, is it not going to give me another pairing? No, I'm sure it will. It's just going to wait a little while before giving me a second pairing. Um, can't say I blame it. All right, here we go. Um, 
Well, that's not what we intended to play. I gotta get this damn mouse fixed. Okay, well, we got some kind of Sicilian thing by proxy. And now we're in I don't know what. Now seriously, I don't know. Um, here, take my bishop. Let's have some fun. If we're in the last few minutes of a tournament, of course I'm going to sack something. We've got to risk it for the biscuit. Um, don't play like this over the board. You will lose. Um, the, actually, the sacrifice was entirely unnecessary, but that's what makes it more entertaining. Knight takes knight. The beautiful thing is like... Oh, never mind. Um, oh, I don't... Okay. I thought I had stuff here. Here, let's take that way. Knight moves his knight, and I get d5. And because I get d5... Oh, I'm in check. I've got to move. Okay, he's got knight e6 here. Um... We're going to push. And then just get the rook over to the file. Uh, okay, he did stop my knight e5 nonsense. Um, so pin this knight. I didn't need that pawn anyway. It was just stopping me from developing my pieces. Uh, this position's kind of bad. Bad would be the correct word to describe this. Um, okay, I have to take, or I just get killed. Um, Alright. Which discovered attack should I walk into next? Oh my goodness, is my queen trapped? No, I have a single square for it. Right into the heart of um, this nonsense. Okay. This might take a miracle to escape. Um, check! <laughs> Saving the queen for a turn. All right. This is not good. But with one minute left on the tournament clock, we have to play it. All right, we've pinned the bishop. See, this is called a pin. I'm banking all my winning chances on this pin. This is the whole point of the opening. I might need a new opening. All right, we got that pinned. Um... Sad thing is that, well, he can't win this against me before the tournament clock expires. Um, other sad thing is that if I play fast enough, I might beat him on time. Um, which I don't deserve. He can't hit my queen here, though, and this bishop is pinned. And if he does rook f8, I just take the bishop. Um... I don't want the queen arriving on h2 or h1. Uh, okay, we'll take one of those. Okay. Um, well, this sucks. I don't have very many tricks I can attempt here. Now if he does queen d5, I'm kind of compelled to play f3, which also sucks. Um, but I've got counter chances. There we go, that's a pawn. 
Just need to win a couple more pawns, and maybe I'll have a chance to draw this. Okay, he forks me. I'm, oh, he does not fork me. Let's push. Okay, get out of this. Um, I have to go back and collect the H pawn because I can't win anything on the queen side. Go back and protect this. Ew. Well played. Um, that's really hard to meet. Oh, I'm forked. There we go. Victory is mine. Oh no, we lost to a gay pianist. Oh well, we tried. The sad thing is, like, it says next Blitz tournament, and it's telling me under 2,000 Blitz Arena. And I guess if we do... Oh, no, I'm not under 2,000 just yet. Well, but it won't let me join anyway, because, um, like, my rating earlier today was over 2,000, so... That's not an option. Um, yeah. Well-deserved victory. Actually, let's check out the tournament list and see what's going on. Oh, man, so many tournaments to select from. There's the Karpov, One Second Atomic. Um, there's the Crazy House Bullet, One Minute. Nothing with an increment. Well, let's see. Where are all these other things going on? Ah, the Kamsky. Yeah, Kamsky. Okay, here's Petrovich. Um, four minute atomic with two second increment. If your mind doesn't melt playing, the, oh my goodness. Look, there's like a bajillion 2000s in this tournament. And by that, I mean nine. No, I mean eight. There's two players under 2000 in the top 10 here. You play this if you want your rear end handed to you. I mean, I'm just looking at this game on the right and seeing all these pawns still on the board kind of makes me cry. Yeah, I'm afraid to touch that. Um, here, let's play some five minute blitz. Maybe this time I won't time out. Um, and why don't I use the excuse that, you know, um, I'm playing on a larger board, which technically I am. I've increased the board dimension, increased the stream resolution, but have not increased my mouse speed. So I'm playing with the slightest of handicaps here. Can my cursor even move faster, I wonder? <laughs> Be the over 2000 player. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. Oh, man. Well, I guess there's only like 10 people in this tournament, right? No, there's 24, 25. 25 players, which in theory you would think would mean that I could get a pairing. There we go. Um, E4. Oh. Okay, here we go. Real chess. Real five minute chess. Um, okay. Sure. That was fun. Um, 
So basically anything my opponent might have expected got completely thrown out the window. And we're going to play an endgame. He's considering bishop takes knight, I'm sure. Um, I really didn't expect that. So now we're both out of any kind of thing that we might have expected to occur. Um, this looks like a good square for a knight. Oh look, my queen's attacked. Do I play f3 here? He doesn't have anything that can attack my king's side. We're going to play f3 just because it looks outrageous. If he plays bishop h5, I can do g4. Okay. I can still do g4. Let's do g4. Pfft, what's development? What is chess? Okay. So, yeah, now I actually, like, move my bishop to somewhere remotely useful. Attack this. He plays e6. Um, and now we take the center. See? It's all part of the master plan. Bishop c6, I just put my knight... I can't put my knight on e4. Bishop c6 might have refuted this whole thing. We'll never know now. Not unless somebody else plays this against me and plays better um, or plays differently. Oops, uh, my king can be checked. Mm, it's just part of the opening. All right. Oh, he's not playing the check. What? 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 Why? Huh? How? Okay. You got me. Well, I'm going to play bishop g5 to inspire f6, preventing his bishop from taking on d4. And he played it. So now we go back, and I've got my king side covered. All right, and now bishop to f2 supports my center. How do you like that development? Incidentally, I kind of like allowed this knight e3 fork, which he didn't go for either. Um, which probably would have refuted bishop h4. I'm kind of not on a roll at the moment. Um, so let's just keep the momentum going. Um, actually, knight c3 looks reasonable because he doesn't have, I mean, he can defend this knight. It's inconvenient for him to do so. He kind of have to give up his attack. He's got two pieces hitting d4. He wants to play queen f6 and take this pawn. But to do so, he'd have to give up d5. Um, okay. So, he's given up the d5 square. Um, I go back. Alright, so like I said, he wants to attack this. Wait, I can just push it now. Oh, this is great. This is hilarious. It might even be a gambit. Who knows? Who's calculating at this point? All right. Um, he could take b2. He could take all kinds of stuff. My everything's hanging. I don't even care. This is fun. So I'm attacking c7. Oh. Wow. Okay. I'm sure there's a plan behind that. Because, um, you know, if you just chomp my pawn, uh, your king might be getting attacked pretty savagely.
Yeah. Now, I'm fully aware of just how ridiculously perilous this is. Um, but, you know, how fun is chess if you don't take risks that you don't have to take? Completely meaningless, silly risks. Um, all right, so I can castle here and only be down one pawn. That looks reasonable. Um, he might have some kind of bishop move with discovery stuff. Oh, he's got a check. Okay, so I move my king. This rook is defended, so... oh. Hey look, I'm in check. Um, I might be exchanging a queen for a rook in the near future. Um, if that didn't kill me. Well, no, it doesn't. I can survive this. But, um, not for long. No, he's playing well. This is the sort of thing that you should be doing in a five-minute blitz game, particularly against an opponent who plays moves like what I'm doing. Um, yeah, no, I just don't have anything here. Good game. Well played. But at least that time I didn't get in time trouble. So, there's that. That's the silver lining. Yeah, I need to play more 3-2. I just don't have the attention span for this 5-minute stuff. Um, and if I play 3-minute, I'm just getting killed on the clock. So I'm playing fast in 5-minute, not really paying much attention, not calculating. I know stuff needs to be calculated, and I'm just not bothering to do it. And then I lose, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, it was okay. But... Yeah, I need to, if I want to actually win some games, um, play something with an increment um, with a lower base time, though, so I'm not like falling asleep here and sacking more stuff because it's boring. <laughs> I hope you guys don't think it's too boring. Yeah, bullet. No, too much bullet is just too addicting. You don't want to do that. Um, again, I'm not sure what's causing that to scroll. I just don't know. I want to keep blaming my mouse, but how many times can I blame that? I could actually just put in some user style to disable the scroll bar. Make like the page not scrollable. Because uh, I really don't care what's below the board anyway. I know there's stuff there, I just don't care about it. Um, okay. Not sure what A6 is about. This isn't a Noah's Ark trap, because there's so many places my bishop can go. Um, does anybody know the Sicilian? So you probably know more than I do here. Wait, so do I... No, playing bishop d5 doesn't help me here. In fact, it loses a piece. Bishop takes f6 is bad. Ay, ay, ay. I think I should just take this. And now I don't know where any of my pieces are supposed to go. Um. Hmm. 
All right. Let's put a rook on the D file, because that looks thematic. Um, and we've got three minutes and 40 seconds to solve the Sicilian. Uh, how hard could that be? Okay, that's the last thing I expected here. Um, let's attack this B pawn just because that might make him stop and calculate a little bit. Also because he was probably expecting queen c4 check. I don't see pawn d5 as being a good thing here because I have queen takes b7. Um, Taking b7 is not well advised here, but I can take f6. He doesn't even do pawn takes, which I expected pawn takes, because this doesn't look good for black. If he plays c6, I have knight b6. If he doesn't play c6, um, I still have stuff I can do. So obvious discovery is obvious, but... Oh wow, I've got a... <laughs> Gosh, that's like every tactic ever in one, right there. Um, okay. And what this all boils down to is that this is check, and then pawn takes, and then queen takes, we exchange the queens, and then I'm up a pawn. And my rook is invaded. Um, so that worked out okay. Um, if I check king e8, actually it doesn't have a good square for his king. That's funny. Um, I could play a5 first. Okay, let's check, see if he goes king e6. Oh my god, he played king e6. Well, that was a fun game. Um... That might have been able to be calculated better. I'm just going to put out there that maybe this whole c5 thing didn't work out so well. That, like, maybe Black could have spent some of his extra time calculating some of this stuff. Just saying. But no, the point of rook d7 is that his king doesn't have a good square. He doesn't want to put the king between the rooks. If you, um, putting the king up here obviously doesn't work. Putting it on e8, I just play like rook h7 and then can bring over my other rook. Or even rook a1 once he takes there. Um, if king g6, the king is not well placed for like trying to invade. Because it wants to be near my rook. It just can't go to e6 right away. Um, so it wasn't entirely um, nonsense. There was there were plenty of good reasons to do this. One of which is that he could have done like king e7 had I delayed this at all, and then it would have been harder for my rooks to. Um, I'd have to bring over my other rook, and then he could play rook d8. All right, we're gonna claim victory here. Just on the off chance that my opponent um, um, might have left willingly. Or might not have wanted to defend that. I mean, he had a choice. He had basically three options there. Resign, play the move. Or decide that there's something more important than the game at the moment. Um, okay, we'll go Berserk. Um, even though this probably means I'm going to lose on time, because there's no increment. Okay, Bishop e6 is a way to break symmetry. Uh, there we go, symmetry broken. Now we just play Coffee House Chess. 
Bishop e3? Is Bishop e3 happening? Please no. Okay, good. Um, okay, we'll put Bishop on d4. Okay, he's not taking it. Um, oh, I see. Well, that's a free pawn, maybe. Not really, but he takes on a7. Oh, but I could take c3. Do I want to take c3? Or would I rather take the bishop? Or would I rather play something like queen f5 defending my knight? Or f5? Um, I don't know, but I seem to have caused him quite a bit of thought there. Which, in itself, is worth something in a game where both players have gone berserk. My king is safe. Alright. Well, my pawn structure is slightly superior, which doesn't mean a whole lot in itself, um, but does mean something to me, I guess. It means that I can menace stuff easier than he can. Um, okay, that actually does defend the thing. Okay, we'll defend our thing. Where does my knight go? How do I attack stuff? My rook's going to d7 soon, but where does my knight go? I guess my knight goes to d8? Or does it go to e7? Oh! Very nice, very nice. Just wait for him to take it, and all my problems are solved. Or if he doesn't take, I can take, and... Yeah, we can start making threats. Uh, take here, move a knight out. This makes it so much easier to hit his pawns when he moves them closer to my side of the board. Um, okay, attack the king. Um, check. 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 There we go. See, that's how you win. Um, uh, you play tricky moves when your opponent's in time trouble. I mean, I could have exchanged the rooks right away and maybe won the night end game, but when my opponent's blitzing moves out without looking for my replies, um, I have opportunities to try tricks. Um, and rooks and knights are really tricky pieces because rooks, um, unlike a queen, like when a person sees a queen on the board, they can pretty much see everywhere that it's going to go. Um, for some reason, it's more tricky to predict where a rook might end up. Because, well, you just don't suspect half the things that a rook might do. Um, not necessarily in one move, but like where it might end up two or three moves from now. Um, whereas you can pretty much figure that a queen will end up anywhere on the board, attacking pretty much anything. Um, limiting the scope of a rook is a little bit trickier. Oh, plus a rook... Um, I don't know. When there's a freely moving rook, usually materials reduced a bit. All right, so we're seeing a Grunfeld. It's not quite a Grunfeld. Are we seeing a reverse Sicilian? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, we'll support this. And now we've transposed into some kind of 
Well, it's not a Slav, because he hasn't played d4. Um, at some point, okay, my opponent's 1983, so he might know what he's doing. Uh, so we're going to see e4? Oh, you're right, I'm sorry, I haven't moved my e, e pawn, so... Yeah, it's not a Sicilian at all. Whatever. Shows where my mind is at. Okay. Um, this looks tricky. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Am I going to gambit that? Nope. This is probably not good. Double fianchettos never work out because you get crushed space-wise. Um, so I should, I don't know what I should do here. If A takes, C takes might allow me to pressure the C pawn a bit. Um, yeah, this is a really sad position. Wait, no, e5 drops material, so we have to push e6. Okay, and we'll just develop the queen. Aim for c5, maybe? This is pretty disgusting. But, um... Well, it's almost like a hedgehog, except I've pushed my b-pawn too far. And none of my pieces are coordinated at all. I'm not sure what to call this thing. Um, other than sad. Sad is pretty appropriate. Um... He's pushing f4 next. Let's get my king out of here. Okay, he's not pushing f4. Well, YOLO. Okay. That's going to hurt later, but right now it feels so right. Um, okay. Yep. That doesn't take long. That did not take long at all. Okay, so... Now he takes my f-pawn. Discovers an attack on my c-pawn, which I... Well, I'm not sure if he wants to do that. He's probably got better. Because uh, I can actually play knight d5. And kind of def uh, develop my stuff here. It did cost me a pawn. Um, all right, let's take there. Let's get this king developed. There's one piece we haven't developed enough. It's our king. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking king h5 is not so good. But, well, no, I can maybe survive that for a second. It looks more fun than anything else. So let's try it. Justification is that f3 is off limits to the bishop, at least for this turn. Um, I have to admit, I didn't calculate too far beyond that. I don't want to take this pawn, so let's just go forward. You know, bold into uh, the opposing position. Show them that we're not afraid of anything. So here the plan is h5 to undermine this weak pawn. <laughs> okay, I can't... It's kind of hard to keep a straight face here, but... um, Yeah, no, that's, that's the plan. That's how we're going to excavate this king from imminent disaster. Uh, is by clearing this pawn off of g4 so he can move the king back to h7. This might get 
uh, thwarted by queen h7 pinning my pawn to my king. Um, I have to admit, I'm kind of at a loss to address... Oh, or the more straightforward queen g6. Where I might just have to play like queen f7. Uh, assuming I can't do anything tricky. Yeah, I'm out of tricks here, so we're just going to have to do the not-so-tricky queen f7. But now he exchanges queens and just picks off my b-pawn, and I've got nothing. We'll see if he does it, though. Or if he goes for something more ambitious. Oh, that's clever. Wait, so if I take this bishop, what's happening to me? Pawn takes, queen there, um, king takes pawn, queen h3, king g4, queen f3, oh, my pawn's on g5, right, there's no out of that. Uh, if I block with my bishop, that doesn't change anything. So basically, I can't take this bishop. Um, Okay. Well, that makes this pretty... Oh, that's mate in one. That works too. Simple and direct. Well... Yeah. At least I avoided uh, the more prosaic thing. Um, I want to say that there's something to that. This is why I should be playing like three minute with two second increment. As opposed to like serious chess. Serious five minute blitz. Because, you know, some of these people can actually find those mate in one moves uh, at this time control. Um, so. I did avoid complications. This is true. Um, here we go. Didn't expect that. Uh, okay, d4. Yeah, let's just see how this goes. He thought that h6 would stop me. It's not that easy. Okay. See, now we got this check and we win a pawn. So simple. If he plays bishop e6, we have d5, winning um, material. Oh, what black did, let's see, he pushed h6. He should actually be developing his minor pieces. This is why, in a blitz time control, I can get away with this kind of nonsense. Um, it, it's not as simple as you'd expect. Yeah, in a classical time control, bishop takes h7, or f7 there is complete and utter nonsense. Not to be considered at all. But in this time control, eh, whatever. I got two pawns for it. He hasn't castled. I've got, did I say two pawns? I, I meant to say three. Um, just castle. And see, now I've got a uh, pass pawn. And if he takes my pawn, I take an e5. Pretty straightforward. Footnote, he should have taken, maybe should have taken on d4 first. Not sure it matters much now. Um, screen is frozen. You know, I think I should change it back to 30 FPS for next time. 60 might be a bit too much. Um, D takes E5, loses a piece.
All right, so yeah, we got d5 here. Oh, wait, wait, did I miss something here? No, I forgot. Yeah, you're right, d takes e5 would have dropped this knight. Um, but I could play e6 here, which is kind of fun, right? No, because it does knight c6. It takes away some of my fun. Um, I should actually just develop, like, bishop e3. And then we end up putting the queen here anyway. And so now if queen d7, then we can consider e6. Um, or for that move, we just take the knight. Okay, just put the knight on a good outpost, not threatening anything at all. Certainly not going to fork those pieces. Um, so I could take the rook and then do this fork. Or I could check first, king g8, and then take the rook. Or I could check first, see what he does, and then figure out... Actually, if king g8, I still... King g8's even better. Oh my god. That's hilarious. Well, no, they're both really awesome for me. Let's take this wins a heavy material with check. Um, uh, yeah, rook takes is better, by the way. But had he done king g8, I would have taken the queen and then taken the rook. So okay, I think I've played this okay. I'm up 13 points, a queen and four pawns, so. Um, uh, so yeah, that's um, five minute chess, I guess. I should try to play better moves so I learn something over time. But at the same time, this is entertaining. It's too addicting. A3. Please don't ruin my pawn fun. Yeah, here we go. We got a pincushion formation. Okay, I can't push g6 anymore. He's ruined all my fun with that bishop move. So now I have to actually play chess. Um. Um, okay, so how do we play chess? I guess I have to take that. If rook takes... I do have a5 here. No, I don't. Maybe I do. Let's find out. So this is pinned, but he took it. Which I was kind of counting on, to be honest. Um, so, I am so divided about what to play here. Now, this, this is clearly a good developing move. Um, right, so now I can just... There's so many good squares for all my pieces. Um, he's not going to go forward, is he? And by that I mean certainly he's moving forward. Um, I don't 
have any traps here. I should just go into an endgame. This is bad endgame, but um, it's an endgame. And I'm kind of good at endgames, so... That's what we're betting the farm on, is that um, I might be able to play a good move. That's probably not a good move. But this is a free pawn, so uh, don't let other people tell you otherwise that pawn looks free. It probably is. I told you it's free so you could like believe me on it. Apparently my opponent believed me. That's what matters. Um, no, but seriously, this looked like an interesting endgame. Like, if you tried to play e3 and try to win my knight. Oh, I can't do rook b1. Uh, rook b1 is no bueno. Well, alright. Let's undevelop. Uh, really? Why would you sell your urine when you could sell other people's urine? We have to ask the important questions here. Um, Alright, so he's gonna play h4. Unless I can trick him out of playing it. So let's get my pieces over this way-ish. Um, hang on. If he does nothing, I have knight b6. Which actually doesn't win material, but looks cool. Because I thought it won material, but it doesn't. Uh, actually, he's got to do like rook a1 or something. Because I'm hitting his bishop. Probably better would have been rook a8. And then rook b3. I have lost the art of subtlety. That's sad. Um, but at least I have a cool square for my knight. Until he takes it. Um, okay. So, I've got to deal with the fact that he's got this rook a7 move. Um, my plan here was, in, well, to move either of these rooks to b7. I hadn't figured out the rest of the plan until I made the move, but you don't have to plan everything. Uh, he's got rook c8, which is actually pretty annoying. Also that move. Um, okay. Well, we're sacking. We're probably sacking a boatload of material here. Um, don't want to lose the rook, so we're going to go here. Probably just lose my king instead somehow, but at least we're not going to lose... Well, actually, knight d6 didn't win a rook anyway. Um, that knight is worth so much more than a bishop. Plus, we get a free pawn out of the deal. And you know I like my free pawns. Yeah, this is spooky. Like, just because I'm not panicking doesn't mean that this is good. This is actually really spooky. Um... Wait, so he's threatening rook c7. <sighs> Holy moly. Rook c3, rook c7, rook b1. Bishop takes e3. Um, okay, so if I throw in this e2 first, and then play rook c3... 
We'll find out what happens. We'll do it live. It's more fun to see it live. If he hits my rook, I can go to c2. But also maybe I can hit the bishop somehow. I forgot I'm hanging the pawn. So I, ha I better have a pretty serious threat here. I hope I have something better than just simply defending my c pawn. Amazing. Um, I bluffed him. Oh man, I better like figure out how to uh, up this ante. Because I've got like nothing here. Um, and this is kind of forced or my king gets mated somehow. So we're going to see if I can get rook d1 check forking the king and the rook in. Yeah, that wasn't happening. Um, in the meantime, I'm down a minute and ten seconds playing a lost endgame, but I've got, hmm, I've got a knight for a rook. See how good a knight is. Oops, I just dropped my C pawn. Uh, that's pretty bad. On a scale of 1 to really, really, really bad. It's pretty bad. Um, but I have slim attacking chances while my pieces are posed exactly this way. Um, that's what I was afraid of. Check. Oh, no knight check there. Wow. Okay, we're kind of, sort of, maybe alive. Um. Cool. I'll take it, I guess. Um, See, so yeah, I almost lost to a 1500 there. That was exciting. Um, Maybe I shouldn't do the pincushion thing very often. Um, but, you know... Yeah, no, I probably shouldn't do that very often. That was exciting. Just like the one thing in its favor. All right. Okay. It's just castle. And you know, this is a really passive formation. And there's this hole on d6, if I could ever find a way to exploit it, it would be really useful. Um, but in the meantime, I just have this nice, comfortable space advantage. Just develop without a care in the world. Um, bring the other knight over. And play like h3, stopping his pieces from going in there. Okay, so he does take, go back, and um, okay. Uh, that is an attack. That's certainly attacking a thing. Oh, that would trap a knight. Uh, would that night trap even be bad? I don't know. This looks playable.
He can only take one of my pieces, so if I like hang the bishop and the knight, he's got to pick one. Um, okay, so we'll attack the bishop and not attack anything else. Okay, he sees it. It was a nice try. But no, this is good development. He doesn't have very many good squares for this knight. Just play this bishop to a natural development square. Probably does queen d8. Maybe queen b6. Alright, and then we just take the open file. Yeah, next stream I'll turn it down to like 30 or something. Um, Just go back. Now we're attacking the spawn. Okay, and now do I take the pawn or do I not want it? As much as I like pawn grabbing, um, just putting my pieces on good squares feels nice too. It's going to be quite the labor for him to try to save that. Um, so I'll just develop another piece. Okay. Um, attack his well-placed knight. Let's see if he exchanges knights. He probably will. Oh no, he's not exchanging knights. I could trade... I'm not even up material. Why am I playing so recklessly here? If knight f4... Oh, he didn't even play, consider that. Alright, so... Yeah, now I just need to, like, sack, sack, mate, and set up the pieces for the next game. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so... Where's the first sack? Oh, he's intending bishop h5. Truly subtle. So, how do you play... Oh, he's determined to keep that piece on the board. Can't say I blame him. Um... Queen e6 looks ridiculous. Um, why am I looking for such an optimal move here? It's like got bishop h5 threatened, but that's the only thing he's threatening. So I'll just develop my knight. And now... Now what? Do I just ignore that? Do I take it? Taking it looks okay. What I'd want? Oh, he's attacking my rook. I think that's the more important point in this position. Um, that's annoying. So, yeah, I'm not sure how to address that. This looks disgusting, but we'll play it. All right. Take that. Now if he plays knight f4, I just take it, because if I don't, I'm kind of hosed. Um, Yeah, 
I might be in danger here. Did I say might be? Um, I might need to rephrase that. I'm in time trouble. That's what I meant to say. Oops, that's game. Alright, but now I'm curious. Um, was I at any point okay here? Let's... computer analysis... Computer, at what point was this lost? Um, at what point did I get confused about where we are? Uh, no, I thought I had something here. Okay, this is what surprised me, is this knight takes e4. I should have just taken e5. Like, that was... The pawn takes e5 was something I was just telling myself over and over, that this is equal, this is equal, I don't have anything better. Like, if I try anything like pawn d5, my position goes to crap. Um, I didn't see any way to improve upon this. But I didn't want to take e5 because the pawn's uh, structure is symmetrical, and I really don't have much to speak of there. Instead, we get this knight g5, which is ridiculous. But I didn't want to play knight h2. Knight h2 is no fun. Um, but no, after all this, I'm now actually in decent position with my bishop here. I should have played f4. What did I do? Rook d1? f4 is pretty nice. It's comfortable. I mean, it says I should have just taken the pawn, but... Okay, knight e3 is stupid. Um, also, taking d5 would have been okay, but f4 in the first place was just prevented all this. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I've got to work at playing slower games because um, I don't see most of the key ideas. Yeah, okay, here's another position I was pretty confused during the game. Um, so, yeah, here Stockfish recommends h4, and rightly so. The whole point is that I could play queen g5 if I wanted to. Um, if he tries some kind of nonsense attacking my king side, and just easily exchange queens, and that's that. Um, instead, I try this really ambitious knight move. I'm really not calculating anything here. Uh, note that if I play f3, that traps my queen, which um, forces me to take on g7. And he might have been calculating something like that. But he also correctly evaluated that f3 here is just really difficult for white to deal with. Um, okay, I played the... F well, that wasn't forced. Stockfish does not like this move. Even though the Leech's annotation engine's not saying anything about it, uh, this goes from a better position to a worse position. Yeah, I'm not sure what to make of this. Um, there might have been some 
magic resource to improve this somehow. But by this point with knight d6, this position's gotten completely out of control. Uh, even queen f3 would have helped considerably instead of knight d6. What's my knight doing on c4 to begin with? Oh, I took a pawn. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, this is all pretty damning. Um, and I missed my one chance here to play h4, and if he does f3, then queen g5, and I'm still I'm doing very nicely. But instead I blitzed out a move and just got crushed. So, that's blitz. Um, yeah, the time pressure is getting to me in these games. These opponents are better at managing their time. Um... I have a question over here in the spectator room. Did you shift the 3D pieces? I mean, wait, how's this showing up on the stream? Okay, you can actually see the top of the king, kind of. I was gonna say, I did shift this, but evidently not enough in the analysis view. In the actual gameplay view, it looks fine, but from the analysis view, um, the king is going up into the options menu here. Um, so I'll have to see... Yeah, I did apply a user style to move the stuff around, but here I'm missing like 20 pixels of boundary that I have from the actual game board. Like if I go back, if I can... I don't know if I can navigate back to the game. No, something went awry. I'm not sure. Wait, no, this isn't the game board. Whatever. Yeah. We did okay. So, h4 would have been brilliant. I was looking for something. h4 did occur to me as a possible candidate move, and I just rejected it as, like, that's stupid, that doesn't do anything, that's a pawn move. I can't afford time for a pawn move, I need to move my pieces. h4 is kind of a thematic move if you're pushing all in on the king side attack or doing an h-pawn hack of some sort, but um, I rejected it because that's not a good reason to play it. But there was another good reason, it's that because of f3 discovering an attack on my rook on d2, I would be able to interpose my queen on g5. But anyway... Um, yeah, it's been quite a session here. I'll have to experiment a bit more with the layout and see if I can improve this a bit. Um, also see if I can crank this down to 30 FPS, because some people are having difficulty watching this. Anyhow, hope people had fun. Yeah, I guess I did. I might have lost, like, a ton of rating points today. And by a ton, I mean, like, 50. But... You know, we had some good games, and we had some fun games, and I guess that's what matters. Some people care about the numbers a little bit more than I do, um, which I guess for me is a good thing. Now, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. If not, maybe, maybe next time. Either way, uh, see you around. Take care. Have a good night.